Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is March 4th, 2024. Here is another daily analysis. We had a downtick for S&P 500. We kind of like expecting this downtick. However, it was pretty light uh, downtick. It's not a hard sell. So we just uh, take it as a, like a corrective move. If you just uh, zoom in here, you will see that we were absolutely in uptrend. So whenever we get um, top of this uh, channel, uh, we get some minor correction to SMA 20, but as long as we are above SMA 20, so we should see some kind of like a, a corrective, shallow correction, and then a new to uh, heading to new all time high. So um, when we get below SMA 20 and obviously below this important pivot here, which uh, last touched by SMA 20. So I should say market is in a serious correction. So we can see some kind of like a longer, longer corrective move to the downside. But as long as we are above SMA 20, so we will give market benefit of doubt for a bullish rally. However, as I said before, March period is going to be a corrective move. So if you just uh, see some kind of like a, a correction within this month, so you should just uh, take it as a good buying opportunity. Uh, we can get into the uh, buy side. So 48, 43, that's going to be the first target. The second target, which is going to be a fantastic target, is going to be a 4,700. So if S&P 500 goes down that much, we will take it as a fantastic buying opportunity. But I should say 48, 43 is going to be the most probable scenario to 4,900 that we can get with S&P 500. Momentum wise, we are kind of like a down as you see here. Momentum is kind of like faded away. So we just to see a higher high in price, but MACD is absolutely crashed. The momentum is down and also RSI as well. So look at the RSI. RSI is kind of like a confirming MACD. This is the biggest uh, in the history, the biggest divergence for the daily chart in the history that since four months, we will see some kind of like a, um, a higher high, higher low in price chart, but in RSI and MACD, both indicators showing a very, very uh, strong divergence here, which is gonna be a, a lower high. So this means if reversal comes, that's gonna be kind of like uh, shaky for the market. Um, as I said, uh, as long as the market is above SMA 20, we'll give market benefit of that. Moving on to NASDAQ, which had, kind of like a, a deeper correction. So it's just going down 81 points down today. So not a bad price action. Again, NASDAQ is like S&P 500. And we are just at the this um, up top of this channel here. So we should see some kind of like a corrective move. And this correction can go all the way down here to the bottom of this channel, I should say, even can go deeper compared to S&P 500. But I'm not sure if it goes below this. So if it goes below these two pivots, so February pivots are very, very important for NASDAQ. If it goes below this, this means this channel is broken to the downside. So we should see some kind of like a deeper corrective move. Potentially goes to January or December low, which is going to be a great, again, buying opportunity. Right now, as I said, so the bottom of this channel could be kind of like a buying the dip for the buyers to push the price higher to new all-time high. So we are still at the beginning of this um, corrective move. So this correction can go all the way down to 17,000, I should say 400, and we'll see how it goes after that. Moving on to NASDAQ, which was, uh, sorry, uh, US 30, which is Dow Jones. Dow actually already shows some kind of like a sign of correction. So we are seeing a small a bear flag here, just a forming. And this is kind of like uh, holding up still this wide range bar SMA 20. If it goes below uh, February low, I should say this one can go all the way down here, even to um, kind of like a, this uh, potential uh, back test for a previous new all time high for a great buying opportunity. Right now, it's just uh, forming up uh, pretty nicely uh, for a corrective move to the downside. Moving on to, uh, uh, let me just, uh, here, so moving on to gold. Um, gold had a fantastic move to the upside. As I said, this is a weekly chart, so weekly broke up last week, just on Friday, 
a fantastic session on Friday. And this is a daily chart. So daily chart, as I said, if it gets above this um, a four, a 2048.50, it's going to be just the slicing the bother and going to the higher time frame. Um, it can just uh, initiate a great signal for gold. And remember, when gold is start its move, it's going to be very, very wild aggressive. So it goes above 2100. So very, very nicely, it can just attest this um, previous uh, all-time high. And even it can, if it goes above this, I should say the new all-time high is going to be 2157. And then the next one is going to be 2180. So that's going to be kind of like a very, very sharp move to the upside. And everyone's kind of like a surprise today. But uh, um, gold hits uh, pretty nicely challenging middle of this shadow. And I should say a daily chart, it shows us kind of like a, it's due for a corrective move. But if it goes to, if we go to um, a weekly chart, we just got a bear reversal last week. And it can just go, I should say, two to three weeks to the upside with a kind of like a minor corrective move to the downside. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Moving on to crude. Um, um, crude is uh, down today as well. So uh, it's it's nicely coming down after hitting 81 to 80. So uh, I should say crude is just uh, finishing its upside target to 81. And uh, today just uh, going back up 100 points to the downside to $78.93. So if it goes below this area, I should say crude can easily go test this February low and then back bounce and then coming back down all the way to 61 to 65. If you ask me, crude is targeting for that price. Right now, it's just forming a very, very nice corrective rally because I believe that this is kind of like a dominated uh, trend line and this is kind of like a corrective rally for the next move to the downside. So. We will see how it goes with crude. Uh, moving on to individual names, uh, starting with Bitcoin. Uh, this is kind of like GDX. I was analyzing the chart. So here's the Bitcoin, which had a pretty nicely, pretty close to new all-time high. Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, getting above a previous high, but here is kind of like a double top formation. So we can hit um, kind of like a new all-time high, I should say, uh, tomorrow or uh, by end of this week. Well, I should say uh, this uh, is due for a corrective move. And when it goes down, um, it can go down nicely um, to here, to this area, and even this area. So uh, it's it's pretty nice if you just uh, look at that one uh, as a good buying opportunity. Moving on to yield, uh, yield optic today. I believe this is just a dead cat bounce. It's just consolidating prior to the next sell-off uh, to the downside. I believe yield is heading to sub 4% down the road. A treasury, another bad session. The yield was up 1.57% to the upside, which can put pressure on uh, uh, treasury and, uh, and gold and gold miners. But both treasury... Gold miners especially, and gold price actually went higher. So why? Because market just that took it as a, like a dead cat bounce. And they know that the dominated a trend is to the downside. So treasury just had a, like, a negative day. But look at buyers just coming back again for the next uh, buying opportunity. VIX Optic today, Doji Bar pretty nicely reacting to this triangle, uh, sorry, trend line. And uh, this is kind of like at the bottom bottom, I should say, and potentially it can go higher. Dixie is down, so four cents down today. A magma is coming down as well today as well. Uh, Apple hits um, 175, so Apple established itself below 180, which I believe 162 to 166 is coming down the road. Amazon uh, shooting a star at the top 46 cents to the downside and meta four dollar eleven cents to the downside and microsoft cannot hit a higher high or new all-time high it goes down uh, 58 cents still holding up pretty well but i should say 
it's like a roller coaster is getting to the top and uh, the front wagons are heading down while the other wagons are still heading up but eventually uh, they follow uh, the dominator trend and it goes and they will go down as well so uh, google apple is heading down and probably nvidia is the last wagon of this uh, bullish rally which can end to a uh, corrective move right now apple and um, google are the leaders so google can go down 122 to 125 so that's going to be kind of like a good uh, buying opportunity, I should say. Moving on to Netflix, which reversed today. Um, I don't see any like a major pullback until we get below February low. Tesla hammered today. So Tesla just engulfed two wide range bar candles, which is a very bad signal. So probably that's going to be uh, in a bigger picture. This is going to be the bearish momentum or birth flag to the downside. Or this is going to be just a corrective move with a divergence for a move higher. So, um, but I should say if Tesla goes down below this pivot, it's going to be ugly for Tesla. So we'll see how it goes. Semiconductors, $3.55 to the upside. Socks the same pattern, but look at the candle. It's kind of like an exhaustive candle here. Um, Hit a Taiwan Semiconductor gapped up, but sellers took control. AMD, the same pattern here, shooting a star at the top. Hit me all-time high, coming back down. NVIDIA hit me all-time high, 880. And then coming back down, <clears throat> sellers took control. Last hour of the trading session, Texas Instrument. Um, Dragonfly Doji at the top. So this is not a good sign, especially when you're getting to the pivot. A lamb research as well. So lots of stocks in semis. They are just uh, closing uh, lower compared to open today, so which is not good for for their uh, bullish momentum. So this means the technology and semis are heading to a corrective move potentially. XLF, the only sector I should say is still holding up pretty well, but they're due for corrective move as well are financials. So XLF, 10 cents upside today, KBE. Um, this one actually is lagging compared to XLF, four cents up. KRE coming down and sharp rejected at the top. At JP Morgan dollar 39 cents up today. Um, Goldman Sachs as well, so $4.15, still exhaustive consolidation. I should say this consolidation, though, lots of sellers at 396 and 400. Look at the shadows here. Still sellers to control. Bank of America, strength surge to the upside. Uh, 80 cents and not a bad candle at all. So Wells Fargo, the same. However, sellers took control last hour of trading session. Rock your star, as I said before. So when gold miners are start rolling over, you will see these ones are going to do fantastic and outperform the market. So 4% for GDX, which is fantastic. It just uh, getting close above 28, which is a fantastic level. And it can go all the way up to 29, 29 change for a big resistance. So still looking for some kind of like an upside move today and to, uh, sorry, tomorrow, but about Wednesday. So everyone should be careful because we are heading to look at here. So I'm just, I want to give you, this is pretty interesting. Um, I just want to give you a level here, especially this is a white range bar. And these are the watch bench bar that are broken to the downside. So 2885, this is the level I should say everyone needs to be careful for tomorrow. So if it gets there, strong resistance is coming somewhere around here. Even it can go to 29. But I should say this is going to be a pretty interesting area for sellers. So if you see some kind of like a selling action here uh, coming down the road, in that area, don't be surprised. So take it as like a good consolidation level or kind of like a corrective move to the downside. So 28.85 to 29.22, that's going to be the level for GDX. The same for GDXJ. So it's kind of like at the same price action here. We are already getting to that level pretty close. So it can go to 35, 35 and change. But after that, it can go lower. Uh, for a corrective uh, downside move. AEM, look at after hours. So it goes lower after hours, but nice surge during the entire session. It's just going all the way up. 
and getting into this supply area. This is a wide range bar supply area here broken to the downside. So this is very, very typical reaction to that resistance here. Newman, fantastic surge, 4.82% to the upside. Newmont is getting into 34 to 35 area. So we will see how it goes. Franco Nevada, $2.32 up, getting into this important resistance area here. But if it gets above 100, 14, then it should be kind of like a good buying opportunity right now. Every time it goes to this trend line, it's just like going to the backside, uh, to the downside as well. So we will um, we'll see how it goes, but uh, everyone needs to just kind of like a look at this level carefully. Gold barrack nicely to the upside, again, getting into this supply area. So everyone needs to be careful. If it consolidates here, this means it's gonna go higher. I have a very, very high level for gold barrack, 18 to $19, which is going to be a fantastic level for buyers over there. So moving on to XLE, which is energy spider. This one is getting down. And I should say following the crude, um, the rally is over for this sector. And this one can follow crude price as well. XOP coming down as well nicely, engulfing to the downside. OH, $3.69 uh, down. So this one is going down as well after breakout to the upside. It goes down. It doesn't have a good a breakout because it didn't go above this pivot, which is going to be a false breakout today. And Exxon coming down $1.48. Chevron, look at that. So 2.57%. It, it goes to uh, below this wide range bar, which is going to be the sell off for 120 to 130. So we will see how it goes. The entire session or the entire, um, I should say, uh, last week as well. So sellers took control. So everyone needs to be careful with these names, especially energy names can go lower and lower for a great buying opportunity. I believe I covered everything. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel and have a good one. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.